This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm shake it. Wake your fuck ass up. Sway in the morning. That's right. Sway in the morning. Shay, four or five, 33 minutes into the hour. Have to be. We got a very special guest joining us. Mike Muse, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Tracy G. What up? Mike. I love you. Where you been in your travels in the past week? Normally when I talk to you, you're hanging. Yes, last week you were in D.C., right? Yeah, last week I was in D.C., man. I've been local for the last two weeks. So okay. I've been domestic all this week. And then I start traveling again on Friday to L.A. And then next Wednesday I head to uh, to Spain and Paris. Yeah, whoop for it all, Mike. Yeah. Instead of you just stunting. You're just telling us, you go, I'm going to Paris, I'm going to Spain. But what are you going out there to do? Oh, oh yeah, my bad. Uh, so Spain, <laughs> I have to give a TED Talk. Um, oh, um, shit! Wait, yeah. <laughs> hey, hold up. What's going to be your subject matter? Uh, discussing class. Okay. The sights and sounds of privilege. That's yeah. amazing. Okay. I'm so proud yeah. of you. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it. Is that it. immediately going to be online? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm Mike Muse is doing a TED talk. I you got a bunch hands, Mike. Yeah. That's one of my yeah. life goals. Yes. Thank you. I'm excited. So I'm really thankful. So I can't wait to uh, talk to uh, the citizens over there in Spain Huge. and uh, get a chance to connect with them. So I'm excited. Pretty good, man. Don't mess this up. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not. no pressure. Our really special guest that's joining us, I, I met him um, in person, at least, um, at Del Frisco's. And we were uh, hobnobbing over a bowl of lobster bisque, have a beef. <laughs> that's what we do. You know, not everybody doing that, you know? You Tracy G, that's champagne. that class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, look yeah, that's class. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's right, we did have some champagne. <laughs> Had a little bubbly, too. Yeah. Um, one percent he, life. He's a, uh, he's a principal at Codwell Strategic Consulting. Uh, he does commentating for Fox News Channel. Fox Business Channel, CNN, HLN, uh, various, nas- various national news networks. And he's here with us today, Gianno Caldwell, ladies and gentlemen. We out here. Yes, <laughs> Thank man. you for having me. Gianno is a pretty uh, interesting. Is that, was that Italian? or? It is Italian. Yeah, any, is. any in your uh, lineage? So my birth name is Gianni. My parents changed it three days after my birth to Gianno. Okay. And nobody is Italian. Everybody's black. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. Was that for like your resume or something? Yeah, they said, we want you to get a job okay. so we're gonna you know keep it you know yeah one of those but straight <laughs> off the south side of chicago so we out here oh, for real oh, oh, oh the midwest we out here, yeah yeah what's up midwest i was yeah. just watching uh barbershop three okay uh last night and you know it's, it's based out of chicago one of the reasons why ice cube agreed to do it was if they you know talk about the issues that are plaguing chicago yeah. right now there's man. a lot of issues for yeah. sure yeah what's up with your mayor uh, I don't know. He he shouldn't have been reelected, honestly. <laughs> yeah. The guy is a hot mess. I mean, he was a hot mess from the beginning, my opinion. Uh-huh. Uh, but I don't think there's a chance that he'll actually be able to run again. He'll be so weak in the nearest people already bidding for the job. So it's a, it's a horrible situation, and he's only made it worse. He's only made it worse, yeah. right? Uh, were you a part of the uh, the movement that was against Chirac being made in Chicago? Nah, I wasn't a part. I was in D.C. already. I've been in D.C. for four years now, but uh, anything that's going to expose what's going on, I'm all for it. you so, all for it. I'm all for it. Well, let me get your opinion on this. Uh, you know, we've all been paying close attention to this uh, this presidential run that's taking place or yeah. circus or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's been extremely entertaining. We had Anderson Cooper up here uh, two days ago, uh, and we were talking about his interviews with some some of the um, uh, uh, some of the candidates, and of course Donald Trump popped up. Right, you know, and um, we talked about when um, uh, Anderson Cooper referred to him as a five year old. That they they were going back and forth about what happened with his campaign manager grabbing a woman, and yeah. ah, who did what, and then uh, the pictures of Ted Cruz's wife being posted. Uh, not uh, yeah, Ted Cruz's wife being right. posted, and and, um, and and so it made me think about this comment that. The Secretary of State um, made on MSNBC's Morning Joe. Uh, John Kerry had this to say about our current election. And when he's talking to um, people outside of the United States, foreign representatives, this is what he deals with. I'm confident in the end the American people are going to choose uh, wisely. And I feel as if this current craziness, which is embarrassing our country abroad, I cannot tell you. Every meeting I have anywhere, people say, what is happening in the what United the States? Cra- what are you doing to yourself? Crazy. Yeah. Uh, d- d- are we considering that? I mean, it, how how um, does this hurt? Our, is our country looking weak because of this presidential campaign, in your opinion? 
Well, I would say that it, there has been a number of embarrassing moments, and I think there will continue to be a number <laughs> of embarrassing moments. Do I think it make our country look weak? No. Not necessarily, because it's democracy at play. At the end of the day, people choose their candidate. Uh -huh. Who do they want to represent the United States of America in the various parties? So it's democracy at play. It's definitely an unconventional race for sure, yeah. and no one can deny that. Donald Trump, I mean, he's New York bred, so... Uh, it's mm -hmm. become a very interesting time for sure. In, in turn, in regards of the comments he's made about his foreign policy, do you feel like he's strong? I mean, I don't think anybody really feels that he's strong on foreign policy. His huh. rhetoric has been just that. There hasn't yeah. been any formal policy positions in terms of this is what I have in writing. This is what I'm looking to do. It's been kind of inflamed rhetoric, but it appeals to both parties, Democrats and Republicans. Maybe it's a minority in both parties, but it's definitely appealing in some way, shape or form. What do you think, Mike Muse, in terms of foreign policy out of all the candidates who you think has had the strongest stance? Well, by default, Secretary Hillary Clinton, just because she's Secretary of State. Yeah. So just by description alone, she has to go across the country and represent our nation and represent our policies and really engage with these foreign dignitaries across the world. What I would say, though, to your first question, Sway, is that this does... As America has awakened to this underbelly, to this undercurrent of this visceral hate, this visceral anger that is now spewed amongst white men and white women, mm -hmm. America is now realizing some of the ugly side of itself, how it's being expressed. Um, just as we're realizing it, so as the rest of the world is realizing it too as well. And so I think they're looking at us now with pause for the first time because we've always been this, this country and this government that's had strong control. We've had a steady hand. Mm -hmm. We've already had things in place. And so we seem a little bit disheveled. And I will have to say, we haven't seen nothing yet. I think uh, you're right, Gianna, when we talk about uh, the convention and the de democratic process, but that's going to become upended yeah. during the convention time mm -hmm. period. Not only for the Republicans, but now there's some whispers from the Sanders that he's trying to unseat some of the pledge delegates from Secretary Clinton, as well as he's trying to unseat some of her super delegates. Mm -hmm. So you take that into complaint from democracy, and then you look at you go into the Republican convention, <laughs> and you have the Republican Party literally trying to create a broker convention. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that Cruz won last last night more so that Trump lost and he lost at the hands of the Republican Party who yeah. wants his broker convention who wants to see a, literally a fight on the floor so yeah. we don't know how this democracy is going to play out so yeah was, was he expected to lose Wisconsin last night or was it because of the, the bad two weeks he just had he just first you know he, initially we always thought no matter how bad it is for Trump he's going to rebound from right, it right. yeah what was he expected to lose last well, night? Well, polls showed that he was he was going to lose. It showed that he had about a five point difference between uh, Senator Ted Cruz and himself. Yeah. The idea is if he can talk about trade, which has decimated the economy in Wisconsin to a degree in terms of jobs leaving to go somewhere else, and that was as we saw um, leaving the polling places. That was one of the things that voters said. It was about trade for them, mm -hmm. but it was it was somewhat surprising that even with that being such a top priority, that they gave it to Senator Ted Cruz. Um, although he did have the endorsement of a very popular governor, yeah. uh, Governor Scott Walker. So, I mean, I think at the end of the day, this is one situation. And, I, and to your point, Mike, uh, this is a situation for the first time ever. Republicans, conservatives, and Tea Party agree on a candidate. They don't want Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the first time ever for that. <laughs> but with that being said, though, that's what's interesting. So he did take a claim into Wisconsin. So he actually, Trump actually thought he could win in Wisconsin yeah. a little bit early on. He did have a bad week. But what's interesting was that it was how many super PACs ran against him, yeah. how many the establishment ran against him. So when you're taking on not just your opponents, but you're taking on the establishment, you take on Republican leaders, and yeah. then you run against a super PAC who has tons of money to outpour. Mm -hmm. So it was, I wouldn't say it was rigged, but he had a tough hill to climb yeah. just from that momentum alone. You know, um, Ted Cruz, notorious for making long victory speeches, had this to say uh, last night after winning Wisconsin. In the Republican race, will Donald Trump face a new loss to Ted Cruz, or will the GOP frontrunner bounce back from a series of controversies? In the Democratic race, Hillary Clinton is facing a tough fight against Bernie Sanders tonight. Uh, will he add to his recent winning streak? I believe that Hillary Clinton is a better candidate because of Bernie Sanders. Oh, that was the wrong clip. All right, but we'll come right back <laughs> with Gianno Caldwell and Mike Muse. You want to chime in on what happened last night? 888-742-3345. Give us a Now more of the Daily News on Sway in the Morning. It is a rallying cry. 
It is a call from the hardworking men and women of Wisconsin to the people of America. We have a choice, a real choice. The national political terrain began to change two weeks ago. That was Ted Cruz after his victory in uh, Wisconsin. Um, following a rough week for Donald Trump on the campaign trail that included missteps on abortion as well as the controversial um, comments he made on national security. But are those things what hurt him last night in the election? What are you in the primaries, Mike Muse, yay or nay? Yes, I think it had a part to do with it. Yes, he had a really tough week with that. But I think it also part in the other things that we talked about before we get into the break in terms of all the super PACs, establishments, mm-hmm. Republicans, mm-hmm. really trying this stop Trump movement. Yeah. That really took hold in part with him having a bad week. Trump always usually has a bad week, has a bad day. He can usually bounce back from it. But at this point, the Republican Party is over it now. And so they're all coming together against him. Yeah. Uh, Gianno Caldwell has joined us. By the way, if you want to reach Gianno Caldwell, you can directly on his social media. At Gianno Caldwell, G-I-A-N. And then L Caldwell, C A L D W E L L. Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter. Heather B made a great uh, suggestion for Hillary Clinton that she felt like would strengthen her ticket. You know what I'm talking about, Heather B, who you thought she should. Uh... I, I thought that, and, and uh, Tracy G and I were talking about it as well, that she should tell Bernie Sanders, win or lose, you know, I want to bring you on as my vice president. That was my opinion to show some loyalty because she was suffering in that area. People didn't trust her. Mm -hmm. She seemed like the person who's sort of shady at this point. I mean, even with her showing up at Black Girls Rock, there was huge (laughs) backlash from that. Serious, it was huge backlash from her showing up at Black Girls Rock. So people are not feeling her, you know, and she seems to be the type of person that's in it for self. So I just thought, you know, here's an opportunity for her to show some sort of loyalty. What what do you think, Gianno, about that idea for her? Well, I mean, uh, to your point, I absolutely agree, and especially when it comes when it comes to some of the things she said about African Americans in the past, calling young uh, inner city youth, which is cold for black youth, mm-hmm. super predators. When she's advocated for the 1994 crime bill, which has in, uh, imprisoned a number of African Americans, and now when certain issues come up, when it comes to uh, some of the racial justice platforms that Bernie Sanders has brought up, now it's a part of her platform. So wherever it seems that she can get votes, she'll say whatever. Is necessary since so she mm-hmm. comes out as um, inauthentic and uh, disingenuous often. Mm-hmm. So um, I find that to be problematic. But I think in terms of Hillary Clinton, things that she can do to kind of pull or shore up her base would be to. I mean, that's a good idea, but I don't think that's going to necessarily pull in what she needs to pull in. Mm. She needs a young ethnic person, probably the Secretary of Housing. Uh, which is somebody whom they they said would be a good vice presidential choice. But Bernie Sanders is on fire right now, and he has the youth pouring into his campaign and candidacy. But I don't know if that's going to be the it, the end-all, be-all for her in terms of pulling him on, if if that was the case. Here's what Bernie Sanders had to say after his Wisconsin victory. With our victory tonight in Wisconsin, we have now won seven out of eight of the last caucuses and primaries. And we have won almost all of them with overwhelming landslide numbers. To paraphrase Abraham Lincoln at Gettysburg, this is a campaign of the people, by the people, and for the people. Wow, man! That sounds, fired up. Sound like a Lil Wayne concert, <laughs> yeah. right? And, 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 and one last point on that: the reason why it probably wouldn't work out as well is because Bernie is heavily against Wall Street, and Hillary, Hillary Clinton is in the pocket of, of Wall Street. Yeah, she has a yeah, lot of friends. Yeah, so uh, to me, my opinion, anyway, yeah. I should say. So, Mike, Bernie believes that this win and this momentum will take him all the way to the White House. What is your opinion on on what Heather suggested uh, for yeah. the Hillary Clinton ticket, and it, is he being realistic? Yeah, but there's a couple of things. One, to address the, uh, Bernie Sanders' potential vice presidential candidate, usually what happens is when a president picks a vice president, uh, the, the strategy behind it is where can they uh, add to my deficiencies? Where mm-hmm. am I weak on? That's number one. Number two is what state can they win for me, right? Mm-hmm. So you usually pick a vice president based upon state. So it's usually a bit of strategy with that. The reason why Bernie, I don't know if makes a really great candidate for that, is Bernie struggles with really bringing together a, a coalition of diverse individuals. Mm-hmm. He usually tends to white males and then 
the youth, but then that skews more white majority when it comes to that kind of perspective. And so there is a downside to him for that. And as Gianna said, also too with Wall Street, there is some talk about, you know, will he pick the Castro, to what mm-hmm. you're talking about, but also go. too another secretary, former of agriculture, Perez, who is being considered too as well. So we might not normally see the vice president who has already been on the platform yeah. debating her. They'll yeah. usually like to go for the shock factor that can kind of add increasing yeah. to the polls. And yeah. so Bernie has his weakness too as well. On terms of what happens with the Clintons and with African Americans, he actually has a strong show of support in the African American community. Um, and she actually does have a strong record for her as an individual. What we have to begin, and we will begin to see a separate as time goes on, is her record versus her husband's record. Mm-hmm. She gets tied to Bill Clinton's three strikes you out rule. Yeah. She gets tied to Bill Clinton's policy of increasing the prison population with the Congress. She wasn't in Congress at the time, and that was her husband who was doing that. So as we begin to see the difference and the distance between that, we'll see that. She worked with the Children's Defense Fund and other advocacy programs for that. She also has been really big involved with the mothers of sons and daughters who've lost themselves to gun violence recently. Yeah. So yeah. she started coalition and get a conversation started around that. Now, let's move on to you the sound like you're campaigning for her right, <laughs> right. now. Damn, man. No, I just want to make sure that we had <laughs> each side. <laughs> and, uh, I want to understand, what I understand, people, uh, decisions, understand the tactics of how you pick a vice president. Right. And then I want to give both sides of the equation and allow the citizens to choose for themselves when it comes to that. Now, when it comes to Bernie and his chance of winning the White House, it, he has momentum and is looking great. He's a really good looking candidate right now. But mathematically, it is now impossible. Yeah. So the math just isn't there for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a hard reality for a lot of people to accept. Um, and but Bernie, I can't fault him for one to keep going. Yeah. He's raising significant records amounts of yeah. money. There is no reason for him to get out of the race right now. Yeah, yeah. And the speaking engagement fee is going to be crazy after he loses. <laughs> yeah. Heather, so you might as well keep promoting, right? Shout out uh, to Killer Mike. Okay, Gianno Caldwell has joined us. Uh, you can reach him on Twitter at the same address. And uh, we have uh, Lil J from Chicago on the line. Lil J, what up? Jay. What's happening, Sway, Heather B, Tracy, uh, Q, uh, Wanda, DJ Wanda, and I'm glad you got my man. I don't want to put his name to you. Y'all know I believe it is. Hey. Yeah, I'm from, yeah what's happening? I'm from, I'm from uh, Chicago. I yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm from the west side, bro. Okay, okay. And uh, I just want to <laughs> say that you know, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, these uh, candidates, man, I'm tired of them talking instead of talking to us. They're talking around us. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, they were talking about the big heroin problem up in New Hampshire and, and whatnot. Now, it's been a problem in Chicago, as you may know, for years. Yeah. But now, as soon as it gets into New Hampshire, the, um, the, the, the upper class areas, you know, where the rich folks live, when they have a problem, now it's, it's this big thing. So I would like to hear you speak on that, man, and uh, knowing how, this, how that drug has been tearing up our city for years. And I like to like like to hear you touch on that, man. Please, if you don't mind. No, no, absolutely. And that's a that's a great point. Yes, it got in the suburbs, and now there's things that have been doing, uh, been been uh, rather implemented towards it. There was a bill that was passed in Congress to uh, take care of that issue, if you will, or address it rather. Mm-hmm. Now we got to keep in mind where the funding for some of these heroin addictions and some of these uh, other areas of drug addiction that we've seen the people going to the prison population, et cetera, a lot of the funding for rehabilitative services left in the 94 crime bill. So when that crime bill, which was passed by the Clintons, went into effect, the money that would usually be provided to rehabil- rehabilitate those individuals went out the window, leading to a recidivism rate of 75% after five years. Wow. So... This is an issue that's now really being addressed now. And yes, I agree. When there's a there's an issue that impacts another group of people, mm-hmm. if you want to say specifically white people, you know, there are citizens that are going to go up to their members of Congress and say, hey, this is impacting my neighborhood. I want you to do something about it. And we're seeing it being addressed. Is it fair? No, not really, because mm-hmm. it should be a concern of everyone when something happens and it impacts a, a majority of folks. But now it's being addressed, and I'm happy to see it being addressed. Okay. Hey, Lil' J, thanks for your call, man. You're a citizen. Let's wait in the morning. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Illinois. We have uh, Jeff on the line. What's Jeff, up, good Jeff? morning. Jeffrey. What up, Jeff? How you guys doing? Doing okay, man. What are your thoughts? Man, I just uh, I, I want to ask Heather why I actually agree with Heather. Um about Hillary Clinton, if she comes out and says something to Bernie Sanders, you know, hey, win, lose, or draw, I want you on my side. Uh, but I also think that's going to make her look weak, and that's why I don't think she does that right now. But, uh, mm-hmm. man, honestly, with all the stuff going on in Wisconsin, I guess my question is, how the hell do we keep, like, how the hell is 
Ted Cruz a viable candidate? <laughs> How is Donald Trump a viable candidate? Like up in Wisconsin, they, they elected Scott Walker. How, how the hell are some of these people still good candidates? Hmm. Mike, you want to... You want to? How do you touch yeah, on that? First of all, I, I love your energy. I love your passion. So thank you for that and for the call and, and for your question. But wait, that kind of goes into the, the first question uh, with, with the previous caller from Chicago who, right. who asked about some of the issues and voices getting heard. The reason why Trump actually is winning is because there was a voice that had been ignored for so long. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't feel that they had anybody advocating for how they thought. Yeah. Um, they didn't have anybody. And what people fail to realize is that they think that Trump's ascension is a condemnation on President Obama and a condemnation on the Democrats. What we don't include in that conversation that is also a condemnation of the Republican Party. Yeah. They feel that the Republican Party hasn't done enough for the working white male class as well. So that's where the anger is actually coming from, which when Trump comes up and his unapologetic self and he says all the things that he says, which is strong and which isn't politics as usual. We've yeah. never seen this in the kind of campaign style. They like that and they feel like there's somebody like me who's going to go in and do something. Because right. whatever is happening now isn't working. He's going to come and do something. So that's how we see a Trump rise. Now, call with your question with that is is Cruz, what we're not talking about is he's even more dangerous than Trump is if you look at it from a policy perspective. Trump, what he's talking about, we realistically know it's impossible for him to get done just because it's difficult to pass through legislation in Congress when it comes to that. Cruz, on the other hand, knows the Constitution backwards and forwards. He's a constitutional scholar yeah. and he has been in the Senate so he understands Robert's Rule of Order which are procedural rules and methods and strategies that you utilize to get your bills passed. Mm. So he actually has the smarts and the tactics in order to implement some of the things that some would say on the fringe he is possible to do. We also must keep in mind that he had no friends in the Senate. None of the Republican senators actually like Ted, Ted Cruz. Cruz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're right, caller. I don't know how we got to the space, but it's because of this Trump movement, and they don't know what to do. So, yeah. so mathematically, he still has a chance? Well, there is one slim chance mathematically that he could do it. Uh, Trump, could, you mean? I'm sorry, Trump or Cruz? Cruz, Cruz. Cruz. No, no, there's no mathematical uh, pathway right now for Cruz to be able to become the nomination. He's solely uh, banking on a broker convention. Trump, oh. on the other hand, is a slim margin, but he has to do really well in the northeastern states, California, the western states. He's going to have issues when it comes to like Idaho, Miami, Wyoming, and that northwest area. What, what was like Robert Rules of? Robert's Robert. rule of order. Of Robert's rule, rule of, of order. order. Yeah. Who's Robert? So some, some old guy back like in the English <laughs> days who, who created a system. It's my uh, uncle cousin. Uh, That's your uncle cousin, uncle cousin. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, look, we like to leave a question um, for, for our citizenship uh, and for people to keep um, this conversation going. Uh, you can reach Mike Muse directly and Gianno Codwell, you can reach him, too, if you want to uh, interact with him about this question. Mike Muse, uh, what is the question we're going to leave for the citizens? Should Republicans go for a broker convention, or should they just go ahead and just give it to Donald Trump for democracy's sake? Ooh. Mm, should the Republicans go for a broken convention or give it to Donald Trump for democracy's sake? You can hit Mike Muse directly at? At I am Mike Muse. I am Mike Muse, M-U-S-N-S-A-M-E, on Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram. C- hey. Citizens, hit up Gianno, too. At, tell him what your thoughts are on this. Well, my thoughts on the question? No, no. The citizens are going to tell okay, you, okay, and then you okay, can yeah, respond yeah, yeah. to them. At Gianno Caldwell, G I A N N O C A L D W E L L. Again, that's G I A N N O C A L D W E L L on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a Snapchat. That's like cool people. <laughs> yeah, kinda, your mic's super cool. Young, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's you gotta super get young on there, cool. man. You gotta right. get on there, man. Gianno, thanks for coming by <laughs> this morning, man. Thank Absolutely, you, man. man. Thank great you. having you. We'll Thank be posting you. this on Sways Universe today on the website and on the YouTube channel. Make sure you look out for that. We got sports up next. Yeah, we do, we Sway. The Golden State Warriors are now four games away from making history. Okay, thank you. Shay 4 5. <laughs> Kill